Do you have a database where you want to be able to break it apart and have subtotals for every change and let's say, well, for example, my database, I've got it grouped by the year 2010, then the next year, 2011. Let's say I want to add a subtotal in between those two groups at the bottom of 2010 and then scrolling down at the bottom of 2011. Well, if I want to go ahead and break it off, I can right-click, let me go at 28 and insert a row there, and then go ahead and use the sum function and add up the income or the total sold, whatever I want to get for the year 2010. But instead of doing it that way, there's another way, and it's using the subtotals feature. Let me go ahead and hit the undo to get rid of that blank row. To use that feature, which will go ahead and total up the rows of related data, so I've got rows of related data by the year 2010, and then within the year, I've got them related by their months. So going at the end of 2010 from October to November to December. Just go ahead and click anywhere within your database. Come up here, click on the data tab, go to the outline group and click on the subtotal button. It opens up and it says, okay, at each change in what? Well, click on the drop down arrow. It's based upon any of your column labels. At each change, and let's say year, so when it goes from 2010 and it changes to 2011, what do you want to do? I want to go ahead and use a function. Which function? Go ahead and choose one. I want to use the sum function. So at any time there's a change here, let's say I want to get the total income before each change. So down below it says, okay, well what do you want to add the subtotal to? Or the sum function, what's it going to add up? Well it's going to be the income column. Or you can check additional uh, column labels, but I just want the income. I'm going to keep it simple. Click OK and there we go. If you scroll down at the change from 2010 to 2011, at the bottom of 2010, there's the subtotal. It added everything up above, and then of course you can scroll down, there's 2011, the subtotal, and then there's the grand total. Now if you look over to the left hand side, it's got it in outline format. That means that anytime you see a minus symbol, means that it's expanded. If I click on it, it collapses that group, which is in this case the 2011 group. I can scroll up. We can collapse the 2010 group. Now I've got just the totals for both those groups, and I don't see the details for the products. Of course, I can collapse that and just get the grand total. You can do it that way to expand or collapse by clicking on these plus or minus signs, or you can do it by level. If you want the first level, just the grand total. The second level, the subtotals or everything, click on the level 3 option. Now if I want to go ahead and add additional subtotals, but this time not only at every change in year, but at every change in the month, so I can get a subtotal for October, November, and December, and so on. Then make sure you clicked in the middle of your database anywhere. Come back up here to the outline group, click on the subtotal. Now, down below, if I go ahead and make the changes up above, and I say, yes, let's go ahead at each change in the month, get a subtotal for the income, and I click OK, by default, the replace current subtotals is checked, so it's going to erase or get rid of my yearly totals at each change and replace that with the each change that will give me my monthly subtotals for the months. So if I don't want to go ahead and replace what I currently have there, go ahead and uncheck it, click OK, it leaves the changes or the subtotals for the year 2010, but also adds the subtotals for each change in the month. So there's October, the subtotal, November, let's scroll down, December, and then for the year 2010. So now I've got four levels. There's one, the grand total, two. Now when you click on two, if you don't see anything, it actually stays at the level of the grand total. But if you go over here to the right side and click and drag the scroll bar up, then there's the third level. So I have the monthly totals, the yearly totals, the grand total, and then of course to see everything, let's go to level four. And then to remove all that, click anywhere within the database, click on the subtotal, and go ahead and click on remove all. Now there are two subtotals. There's the subtotal feature here and then there's the subtotal function. I went over the subtotal function in the auto filter training video so you want to watch that so you can realize the difference between the two. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.